Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank and if you're thinking it looks a little green, it does because we're treating it right now with API Fungus Cure and I don't have any fungus in the tank but what I have is an aquatic parasite, uh, freshwater velvet and this API Fungus Cure uh, contains the medication that actually kills the freshwater velvet so the normal procedure is to raise the tank temperature to 82 degrees that speeds up the life cycle of the parasite and then you treat for 48 hours you do a second dose for another 48 hours and then with that speeded up life cycle that pretty much ensures that you will have killed off the um, parasite within that time but the parasite is only vulnerable to the medication while it is in the free swimming stage of its life cycle. So it has to go through the full stages of the life cycle to get to the point where it's exposed to the medication. And if you don't leave the medication in there for a long enough period of time, and some of the parasites are, say, still uh, within the fish's body or encapsulated uh, in their little reproductive cysts, they won't be impacted by the medication and then if you finish up the process and you do your water changes and get the tank all straightened out and then they erupt from their little reproductive cysts or they you know erupt out of the fish's body you'll have a, a flare up all over again you will not have fully eradicated the problem so in my particular case since i was unable to raise the tank temperature to the 82 degrees and we're actually operating probably around 77 or 78 degrees in this tank it's about room temperature uh probably a little warmer than that with the uh pump you know the aquarium pumps and everything the electricity running through there that does heat the tank a little bit and all that light shining down in there probably heats the tank a little bit so we're probably a little above room temperature but not anywhere near 82 degrees so the life cycle is probably slowed down just enough that the uh, two 48-hour treatments back-to-back -back probably might not be enough. So just to be on the safe side, we're going to do a third treatment here tonight. That's really all this video is going to be about. I'm trying to just ramble on here a little bit and give you a good look at the tank for a few minutes. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just start pouring the medication in. And you'll get to see the tank go from being kind of green to being very green. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. And then that will be pretty much it for tonight's video. Maybe we'll pull the camera off the uh, tripod there and have a little look around for a minute. I mentioned it or not but I got to put 12 packages in this tank I guess technically I should be putting 12 and a half you're supposed to put one package for every 10 gallons and unfortunately the boxes only come with 10 packs in a box so I've got to buy two boxes for every single treatment the upshot is I now have four packs uh, left over that I can keep in the uh, other room and should I ever uh, have this problem in a quarantine tank that's smaller I will not have packages to treat my 10 gallon quarantine tank rather than having to treat this 125 gallon tank all at once this is a lot of fish tank to have to treat all in one go and it looks like I might have a dead fish floating over there we'll have to check and see what that is in a minute I'm not sure what that is from the angle I'm looking at it it could be a piece of leaf or something floating on the surface but we'll see in a second off the tripod here hopefully I won't push any buttons and stop the recording the little handle on my tripod that allows me to lift up the spring-loaded mechanism that holds the camera in place uh, the little pull tab thingy is broken off and so I don't really have anything to grab a hold of it makes it difficult to get the camera uh, off the tripod seamlessly like that so it's really really green now that I've got everything treated and that is most definitely a dead fish. Boy, I can smell it. Uh, it's one of those new minnows that I brought in to the tank. There was one of them that was really, really beat up and sickly looking. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and assume it was that one. Uh, I was looking for it uh, yesterday and I couldn't find it anywhere in the tank. I didn't know what had happened to it, so maybe it was like caught underneath of something or it was dead on the bottom. And after a little bit of decomposition, it started to you know swell up with gases and it is now floating on the surface. So that's definitely gonna need to be uh, taken care of. As I said, as soon as I got near it, I could smell it. So that is a very, very dead fish. So there you go. That is a strange looking fish tank. The um, the two fish that had the ick on them, or not the ick, the uh, velvet on them the most were my two remaining large shiners that were in here. And of course now they've now gone to the back of the tank and they're hiding. Uh, I was going to try to get a look at them as they come up front here. And they really do look better, but I can still see enough of that sort of shadowy, like, it, it just depends on the angle you're looking at them. If they turn towards you, you can suddenly see all these sort of, like, gray, cloudy spots all over their scales, and then they turn, you know, away from you, and, and all the spots just vanish, and you can't see them anymore. They're like ghost spots or something. Uh, really strange looking uh, disease. I can see where they get the name velvet for it. Another common name for it is gold dust disease. And I don't really get the gold dust appearance at all. It didn't look golden to me, and it didn't look like dust. It looked like, you know, like I said, almost like a weird sort of gray, uh, like almost like a powdery look. It, it almost looked like little patches of powdery mildew. But then again, it would turn sideways, and suddenly you wouldn't see it at all anymore. It would look like a perfectly normal fish. So I knew something was going on with it. And there you get a little better look at this one. So it looks fairly normal, but again, when it swims in certain angles, you can still see that it's definitely got some weird little blotchy spots going on. So I definitely feel that doing this final third treatment, in spite of the instructions only saying to do two treatments, I definitely think this is a, a good idea in this case. There's still evidence to support the idea that that fish is not fully cured of the freshwater velvet. And like Ick, Velvet is one of those parasites that, if ignored, it will kill all of the fish in the tank. It'll just kill everybody eventually if you don't finally get in there and do something about it. So maybe we'll get a look at him this time now that he's come around front. Every time I get near him, he darts to the back. So you can see he looks a lot better, but you can still see his skin or his scales almost have a sort of blotchy appearance to it. That's a little bit about what I'm talking about. It's not really coming out quite right on camera here so maybe that's a good sign maybe that's you know it's not so visible anymore it's beginning to clear up uh the water is also really green and that makes it a little difficult for the light to penetrate properly and to get proper you know colors reflecting and everything else so we'll give it a few days and we'll see where we go and if i still feel like it needs more then maybe we'll do one uh final treatment or whatever but i'm hoping after three doses of this stuff then we should be in the clear and i should go ahead and start draining the tank and then i'll probably run some carbon in there for a few days and the carbon will help pull the last little bit of that medication out and who knows maybe i'll shoot a video where i talk about uh putting activated carbon in your fish tank because i don't use it in any of my tanks unless i need to and getting medication out of the tank after you're done with it is one of the few things that activated carbon is absolutely excellent at doing. That's one of the purposes of uh, activated carbon is to remove chemicals from your tank. It's a chemical filter, not a physical filter. But again, maybe we'll talk about that in an upcoming video in the very near future. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss that or any updates on this 125 gallon native tank here. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you real soon on the next one.